funny enough, because uh, I, for the longest time, I call you Parvati, but I'm pretty sure it's Parvati. 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 Mamuka or the... Ma, yeah, wow. Something like Mamuka would be nice, but they call me Feminichi for being a feminist. Oh, uh, that's yeah. That's not a sweet way Oh, gosh. Right. I was going to no. say, I don't know that that is a yeah, positive not. term, but you yeah. can wear that like a badge. Of I did, actually. I got it embroidered in my bag. Did you nice really? Oh, well, yeah. That sounds like something you would do. That's fantastic. <laughs>
languages, yes. genres, yeah. and the fact that she started acting when she was 13 years old, mm -hmm. which is at this point considering it's child labor and there were no laws. Yes, right, right. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. She's a right, and the best part is from what she said, she's always known that she doesn't want to do it, she needs to sleep. And that's something that when I heard her say in another interview, I realized that that's been me too. Mm -hmm. Right from the beginning, I've been like, if it feels wrong, if I don't align anymore with this craft or this job, I'm going to go to something else. I'm going to set Absolutely. a and start a stall, sure. try. It's a good thing. So yeah. as long as I find dignity in this job and I will stay. And then when she said that, I was like, oh, there is a hope that I might become like her as I get mm -hmm. older. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, while on the job, and you know, you've worked, it's not like that you're a rookie and you're working with a, yeah. a vet here. You're both veterans. She's just even more of a veteran. But did you get um, any kind of uh, uh, starstruck while on set? Like, yeah. I'm, I'm acting with her right now while doing it? Actually, I didn't. Yeah. I, I don't like know why that actor. has never happened with me. Mm -hmm. On set, it never happens with mm -hmm. me. No matter who comes in front of me, just when I'm in the costume, yes. everyone becomes the same. Right, everyone's collaborating. Everyone's, collaborating. Right. everyone's a reactive vote for me, yes. for me to use their energy mm -hmm. and for me to give back something. Mm -hmm. And that's something I think right from the beginning, the first five films I ended up doing, especially because in those films, the posturing and the, the whole, um, what do I call it, the fanfare around certain actors was so much, yeah. I was so put off by it, Sure. is that your the, the whole fanfare on set done by the managers and the assistant directors to certain actors, mm -hmm was taking me away from my job, my craft. Sure. I was getting affected by that. Mm. And I was like, now, I need to remove everything that will impact. Because I can't tell the audience when they're watching, it's like, oh, that day these guys were behaving like this, and that's why I was so bad at it. Sure. At the end right. of the day, I have to, like, that's what's gonna be there forever. Right. So, um, yeah, I think that never happened, and JT always helped with that. Yeah. Like, she, she does not have a sense of, that ego is just so well balanced. Like she understands that her value is very high, but she she blends. Mm -hmm. Like the first scene we shot with her was exactly the first time you see her on, on in the film, saying, "Oh, why are you crying? I'll take care of her." She's like my my child, my daughter now. Mm -hmm. And I didn't even notice her. Like I remember, I just was so in the process of saying goodbye to my mom, goodbye to my dad, this whole new thing. She's saying something I'm not even. Thinking looking at her right and that just i mean that goes i mean it says a lot about her as yeah well. very much really. what was it that scared you about the project and you said that scared you when you yeah. first read the script and you first you were exposed to this through a narration of the story or you actually got the script no a full narration just full narration yeah that's what i figured yeah and, and he narrated the whole thing and i i it was a really great script even at that point like mm -hmm. he made a lot of changes eventually tiny changes but like big impact but then um when i heard it first thing is that 2018 was a very difficult year for me mainly because of a lot of um things that were happening in the industry i was i was talking a lot about the internalized misogyny in movies mm -hmm. and then there were the repercussions of that the trolling and the attacks yeah, and all right, that right and that had taken a huge uh hit to my like confidence and mental health issues and whatnot sure. so I was looking for some levity in life, mm -hmm. and this came, and I was like, oh, yeah, this it's is not fun. really, not a lot of levity. It's the exact opposite, <laughs> like, like, oh, and a hundred miles later. Yeah. And so I was like, I don't think I can handle it, or if I do, I might be, I might need help for a long time after that. Yeah, and I understand that. Eight thirty, like. Did that. it yeah, feel emotionally draining this one? Because it felt Just like three fourths <laughs> of the movie, you guys were in tears. It yes, felt like, it, and it, even it, when you're not. You're always carrying such weight out of what's going on. Yeah, and there was no point during shoot that we could let it off. Yeah. Because we have to build from there. You reach. This is something, by the way, uh, Renee Zellweger said in one of the inside actors. Like, if you get to a point and you don't relax, or like not relax, if you if you sustain that, you can build from there. But if you keep relaxing and you have to keep starting from scratch you don't really go higher right. in your understanding of what you can do on set right. um so when i'm on set i feel like i can relax i might want to take a break i might want to check instagram or whatever but i won't because i'm like oh i've reached here and it's mm. only going to add a certain body language like my traps were up here like my shoulders were here the whole time and i had to be like 
the number of times I would just roll back my shoulders because it hurt over here, the swelling around the neck mm. because of the cortisol oh, the spike yeah. was crazy. Because but that you can't see. But you can see, like if you look at me, if you look at Anju's neck, it's always swollen. Mm. And that's just actually what happened to my body just being there. And I was like, I'm glad that my body reacted so visibly that Anju can use that. Absolutely. Like, there's also that. So you were method. I did not try. <laughs> I'm kidding. And I'm actually quite method. For them, like, yes. I, I love the whole thing of yeah. what kind of um, fabric does my character like? Exactly. What gives her the ick? Mm -hmm. Or what did he eat? What did she eat that morning? Maybe she's feeling bloated and she's yeah. just pissed off because of that. Yeah. So I try adding those elements into it, and there are some directors who enjoy that, mm -hmm. like just talking about those things. Some people are like, just leave me alone, finally. Like do whatever. Like, just get me to stay. <laughs> do your job. Yeah. Yeah. And then I'll be like, okay, now I'm gonna have fun. I'm gonna create like a whole other universe with uh, whatever is there on screen. What? Uh, sorry. On on that on that note, mm -hmm. what? Because certain actors say when they get the costume on, that's when they really feel like the character. Is that for you, or is it a different part of the process that you really start to feel the character? It is definitely. The I mean, for me, I tell the costume designer to send me the costumes like at least a week early yeah, so I can possible. I can live in them because the costume has to wear you as yeah. well. There's a certain way this T-shirt fits me now mm -hmm. because I'm notoriously known for wearing the same outfit to the airport and back, like that's my airport outfit. Okay, that's how you get yeah. comfortable. Yeah. And I also now know that how my body responds to what kind of warmth this gives me when I'm in an air con air conditioned room sure. and outside. Sure. And especially because I'm sensitive and I have ADHD, I was like, okay, I have to know. Okay. You, you you found Since out. Since birth. Yeah. Since birth. Yep. <laughs> yes. Uh, so that, I think, I think that's more for me than for me to go and act. Is that I don't want that to be a new that that shouldn't be another variable for me to deal with. No, not set. at all. No, you make, you give yourself yeah. the best possible outcome. Yeah, I just yeah. want it to be like second nature without thinking about it. Mm -hmm. If you, they give me a new costume out of the blue, yeah, yeah my face just changes. Why would you do that? Yeah. Wow. Why would you do that? <laughs> no, but then they understand me now a lot now that I've. Been working for 18 years, like people know the reputation as like, don't piss her off, like just be where you're going. I'm not a bad person, I just have my ADHD. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We asked last night, we had, uh, and you had re referred to this uh, the night we saw the screening of the film, that we were speaking with Christo about the continuity aspect of the fact that the, the film was shot mm -hmm. in continuity, and we asked him if he had done that. I assume it was intentional. Yeah. And our feeling is being actors that that, that was a gift. That, that's wonderful, yes? Not, For sure. Not like especially, to start with the climax. Especially <laughs> this film. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> the thought of having to do, did you request? No. Is there any way we could do that? Because, I mean, that's a production. That's a big deal to ask production. It, it is. Film and you know. What worked for, for us actors is that they needed to do it in, uh, in the chronological order of the scenes because they needed to build the flood water according to in that. The house. Uh, they couldn't go up and down. If they didn't do it for our benefit, guys. Okay. Like they, <laughs> okay. They were trying it to, was a production <laughs> issue It first. was an art department and production decision, which is a happy blessing. Yeah, yeah a happy blessing. blessing. But I wouldn't shy away from asking something like that. I'll always yeah. ask. I mean, the worst they would say is no. No, right. And then you find your way around it. But this really helped us, is that the more we were getting um, into it, into the depths of it, the water was like kind of closing in on us more and more. Mm. And for me and Uddhav Chichi, I can say that this is completely new, this feeling, but we have to pretend like this has been happening for years. So I'm folding the clothes and I'm doing my thing, but we're also just wading through water. Right. But without actually reacting to it. But it is new for us. So how to not pretend it is like, that was another additional layer of acting that we had to do. Yeah. And um, this is just on your ADHD comment that I, I, I've never talked to another actor about it. Um, do you, and maybe you've never thought about it, do you feel that the hyperfixation that you can get from having ADHD helps you as an actor? Yeah, it does. <laughs> no, really does. You can zone in so fast and nothing else is there. Nothing else is there. It's absolutely And uh, in Della, my personal life is hell. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> But professionally, professionally, as long as, as yes, yeah. <laughs> I'm making money out of my exactly, life. absolutely, exactly. Yeah, That's the hyperfixation part of it for sure. Yeah. No, it, it also helps. There were times that uh, some of the focus pullers actually are the amazing 
um, they give you a certain measure of what went right and what went wrong because there is also a certain dance we do with focus pullers or the ones who are holding the reflectors yeah. because we, we, we have to do that dance of how much you can move and how much right. and I will be telling them oh, there is a possibility I might move here too is that is that okay for you and they will be like no that's too much I won't be able to catch you yeah. and when I do that uh, after a shot, the director would have moved on to the next shot or may not have said it's okay or not and it's okay for me, like I, I don't have to be praised after each shot or anything but I would look at the focus puller and I would see them getting affected by the performance mm. and for me that's sometimes the first and the only audience member that I look for after a shot is not even the director if the director said nothing, so I'm like so yeah I'm sure it's okay, yeah, that's why you moved on or she moved on but the focus puller or the reflector person there are times that you see them sort of getting TV eyed and I'm like okay yeah. maybe this will work right yeah so, yeah. so that's the only time I even look at another person otherwise nobody exists yeah. and that's why um, I think I feel like my brain is like just a movie mix of other actors uh, statements in interviews uh -huh. so again what Naomi Watts I think said in one interview said you have to be so open to everything that happens around you like a reflector falls or a kino line goes off, you you still have to get impacted by that. You have to be skinless for that. And I think in that sense, ADHD is a superpower because everything does affect you, yeah. and you just have to let it. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And in other aspects, it's uh. It's no. Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> so I have kind of a two-part question related to the project and what you're doing next. So yeah. the first part of the question is, since this was done chronologically. How was it when you wrapped filming? Was it hard to let go of this character and this project, or were you you felt content, it was complete, and you were ready to move on? I was definitely ready to move on, and I did not think about this project until Crystal called me for a year later. Wow! I just did. I just yeah, you, were, cut. you were ready. Yeah, cut, done. Cold, cold turkey. Yeah, like no contact with anybody, even with Chechi. I think she also needed a break. Mm -hmm. We didn't even question each other. Next time we spoke, we were like, hey, what's up? That's it, right? Yeah. <laughs> we didn't even say, oh, how come we did not talk? But sometimes it happens. I have another actor with whom I had an experience like this that the experience of actually filming that movie was very bad. The movie came out well, but the, just the process just sure. was, not, was not aligned well. Right. And uh, he's, a, he's a sweet guy and like a very good actor, but we were going through hell together, so we became like not friends after that. Mm. I feel like that also happens sometimes the opposite. Sure, yeah. absolutely. So I think Gigi and I took our time off and um, I went off to Sweden. I went for my friend's wedding and pretended I have never done this movie. Yeah. Uh, but what did happen, and it happens with every movie that I do, is that Anju finds herself in me also. And then the choices I make in my life is now informed by that experience of having lived as her. Yes. So I feel like there's a lot of my personal life has changed mm -hmm. because I did this. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, yes, that makes sense. And then the part two of that is, and uh, correct me if I'm wrong, if we can't talk about this yet because of no publicity, sure. are you two not working together again? Are me and DJ? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hound her. <laughs> <laughs> do, you have, like, do you have <laughs> anything that you're currently working on? Um, together. No, not okay. yet. But okay. the next one is going to be, and I'm manifesting hard, and this is the first time you you all hear it. It's it's going to be a comedy. Hey, great. Yes, and I'm going to bring in more women from Malayalam industry to that. Yes, do. So doing developing something myself. Yeah. Because I understand I can't get others to do that. It, it is. It has to be my desire. Sure. Uh, but then, yeah, an out and out comedy with her as the lead and the rest of us just being part of it. Yeah. That awesome. That'd be fantastic. Um, well, the question I had about the media industry is, uh, do you, why do you think it is that that industry, it seems like more than others, audiences accept kind of whatever the industry wants to give it? A lot of times in terms of like, this is a small budget film, a good story, and they kind of all go support it. And you do see, I mean, there are small budget films in other industries as well. But in, it feels like the Malayalam industry, like that's what the audiences want. They want a lot of content, a lot of content-driven things that like yeah. high artist massy films, even though there are some of those. Yeah. But uh, why do you feel like it's the Malayalam industry the audience has really taken to, to that? I think it has to do with, and this is my guess, right? Like this is all, not my guess, it's my observation is that there is a strong connection to literature in our 
street. Okay. And I'm not talking about the literacy rate as such, like we go to school or it's not the education no, part right. of it. It is that art has always sort of stamped the times that we're living in. Be it books, be it music, mm -hmm. poets, uh, lyricists are always talking about that particular political climate. And so no matter which superstar has come and gone, it has always boiled down to, if you notice, the superstar movies has tanked the yeah. first day. Right. And the audience are like, we will just not accept it. Then there is no blind hero worshipping. Um, sure, social media might have changed a little bit of that, but I feel like the, the strong connection that we are paying for something and so we deserve to be respected, our intelligence deserves to be respected, mm -hmm. has been an ask by the Malayali audience all over the world. So yeah, there are times that I've been told like, you know, you exist, I mean, you are able to do movies because we accept you. Mm -hmm. And it comes from sometimes a really um, not very good place. Mm -hmm. right. But underneath that, I see that too, is that if I do a bad movie and they reject me, I'm so okay with that. Mm -hmm. For my personal choices, I'm fine. Right. But if I do a bad movie and they're like, yeah, that was terrible, by the way. And I'm like, yeah, I'm sorry. Like, you paid I your money for that. that was you, right. you took your time out from your life. And the, that was a service I was, I was supposed to provide and it didn't, it didn't fly. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to work harder in the next one. And that's a very respectful relationship yes. that we have. And that's the only contract me and the audience have. The rest of it, I'm, I'm going to call them out. Mm -hmm. And they, they can't do anything there. So I think that's been the case from the very beginning. Uh, be from the time Green Nasir and oh. Sakhir and all of them were doing. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, I, I want to get the name of it right because I was doing a little homework mm -hmm. and the organization that you are um, a part of yeah. for women yeah. um, is the Women's Collective, is women that correct? Women in Cinema Collective. Yeah, Women in Cinema Collective. Yeah. And is that something, that's something you began? You began in partnership with some other people or you came on board mm -hmm. with? So just want to know a little bit more sure, about sure. that. Sure, no. uh, In 2017, one of our um, colleagues were, she was abducted and um, and assaulted in a moving car. Uh, that's the 17th of February that happened, which shook our industry and shook everybody. I was at work, I was in uh, north of India filming, when I got a call from a friend who was also an actor saying this has happened and I couldn't believe what I was hearing, it's my city and mm -hmm. they were driving around with her and this is still um, a legal case. So, you may want to put a statement. Yeah, uh, this is right. Of course, right. So, um, when this incident on on 17th of February happened, everything stopped. Life as we knew it, our idea of or the jobs, our everything stopped because we realized this can happen to us too. Anything can happen to us for us to be like not open up about the issues that we're facing at work. Mm -hmm. If we do that, this can happen to us. This right. was a quotation gang which was given a job to do and it was carried out to blackmail. And there was this thought suddenly that we could do any other job. Why are we here where we have zero protection? Mm -hmm. We don't have any entertainment laws. We yeah. have no, no unions. Yeah, no unions. Now, right. We do have an association, a welfare association, but that wouldn't suffice for there's no grievance repress or cell, nothing like that. But we do have the laws, it's just not implemented. Mm -hmm. Um, so, yeah, we got together as in a couple of us just started chatting, we started a WhatsApp group and we realized that the repeat offenders are like quite like prominent people mm -hmm. and then we decided we should uh, start, I mean, register it as a society mm -hmm. and then go meet the chief minister and put it as a proper request that we need proper investigation as to what's happening and on each film set and it's kind of... Uh, protective measures are preventative measures right. are put in place. Right. So that we don't have to go into the punishment stage, we prevent it right from the beginning. Happy, yeah. And it's been seven years since we started this and it's sort of like we've won a lot of those uh, challenges. Like it's like just getting them to implement the law. The resistance was unbelievable. Mm. And, and they're like, no, there's no problem. We are like a family. And I'm like, that's exactly why. But even when it's a family, you need preventative yeah. measures. Yeah. And uh, then we won the case. And uh, now every film set has an internal complaints committee. Uh, unless, un unless until they have it, they cannot make the film. The mm -hmm. production cannot be done. 
So we do, we're basically an advocacy group at this point. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that's changed our course of our career as well because when you're a whistleblower, you're not exactly. <laughs> yeah. You get a lot of heat for that, but that's, exactly. that's good heat to take. That's good yeah. heat. I yep. mean, it's good to learn how to not be like the as well. That's good. Yeah. It's a good learning. Yeah. yeah. It was lovely talking to you. I want to finish it off here with a little rapid fire. Uh, just silly questions, though. So yeah. Don't worry. Uh, coffee or chai? Coffee. Black or cream? Black, no sugar, thick as tar. <laughs> right on. Hell yeah. Good coffee, too. Huh? Yeah. Like Gotta some. be good. Not bitter. Favorite Hollywood actor and actress? Or a couple that you like? Oh. A lot. Yeah, any of your favorites. I know you've mentioned a lot. Mm. Actually, oh, well, without a doubt, it's Kate Blanchett. Ugh. Uh, and uh, my God. So well, you had said Jodie Foster. I did, but like, like I'm like, if you're going male, male, yeah. female. Yeah, okay. Um, okay, Blanche, that's a good one. Andrew Scott at this moment, actually. Andrew Scott. He's one of my one favorites. Of yes. I've loved. I'm so yeah. glad he's now getting the recognition. Yeah, it's an Austin yes. for, for a long, long time. He's a beautiful yeah. actor. He's, I mean, Moriarty and Sherlock is oh. one of the greatest performances. This is oh, it's so it's so amazing. Amazing. Yeah, that's, I've been thinking about it right now. I'm seeing his face. Yeah. Some of your favorite uh, Hollywood movies. Okay. You know, just right. like one specific thing. Yeah. Oh, it's from The Edge. Yeah. The Hours. I keep going back to The, the hours. hours a lot. Okay. Mainly because of just three amazing actors in, in that movie, and Julianne Moore, especially. Um, the one other film, what did I say? Silence of the Lambs. Oh, great film. That's a great film. Yeah, I watched it even like on my flight over. Mm -hmm. I watched it to go to sleep. <laughs> it's that's only awesome. comforting. It is. Yeah, that's a great film. Awesome. Comforting actor. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> What's an overrated food? Mm. Burgers. That's okay. The American in me is hurt. I'm sorry, but it's just... <laughs> if American it's just, burgers? Yeah. All right, you need to be taking on the right burger voices. That's yeah, all. That maybe that's what. Yeah. That's what we're doing next. Or you're not talking like McDonald's. No. Okay. You know, that there's... is like you're not even acknowledging that. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. But like, I haven't had a proper American barbecue yet, which I'm aiming to do. Uh, Bledsoe. Bledsoe is actually not far from here. Really? Yeah. Bledsoe. Bledsoe. It's the best barbecue in yeah. Hollywood. LA doesn't have a lot of good barbecue. Okay. We know we lived in Texas for a while. And this they place have, is. They they have have this is a barbecue. Texas themed barbecue place. Amazing. Yeah. Bledsoe? Bledsoe. Bledsoe. Yeah, it's the But yeah, burger, I feel like whatever I've had, I've just been like, eh. Okay. We've also seen in Indian movies that the pizzas look awful. We've never seen a good looking pizza in Indian movies. In Indian movies? It looks like microwave pizza. That is true. But is pizza an American dish? We, no, well, I mean, it's Italian, but we have our Italian, own version of it. Right. Right. In the yeah. same way that, like, India will take American food and india it, I like oh, yeah. to say, yeah. we did that to the pizza from Italy, and, like, yeah. we made it more carb-loaded and more fat-loaded, right. as we do with most things. Most things. Oh, but can I ask you, do you know this? Uh, do you know where butter chicken was originally? I think, well, there's, there's a fight over that right now. Yeah, I know. There's, there's some thought yeah, there's for this job, like, but then it's actually English, right? It's Scottish. Scottish. Scottish? Yeah, yeah. it's great. like I went to Scotland last year and I was like, butter chicken is on the menu at every like tiny every bar. In I'm like, today's special butter chicken. What is happening? <laughs> but yeah, colonization. Uh, yes. Right. Yeah. Uh, favorite Malayalam movie. Oh, this is a good one. Adam and Eva. Adam's rib. Okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> the media. Say, say it again. Adam and Eva. I'm trying to figure out if you've seen it before. Okay, it's a uh, Katie George's movie. Okay, Katie George, yes. It's one of the most progressive movies about women and empowerment and equality that you can watch. We would have remembered it. You let me know if we've seen it. Yeah, if we've seen it, it, I'm sure we would have I'm bad it. with my little names because yeah. it's a beautiful language. It sounds like gibberish yeah, to my ears. It just <laughs> does. It just rolls. It's, it's, like, yeah. it's, it's just. That's what I'm doing, yeah. So, yeah. It's beautiful. Um, favorite comfort food? Can I say it in Malayalam? Yeah, yeah, of course. Chorum oh, Chirubayar. Basically, it is a red rice, the Kerala rice that we get. Yeah. Have you ever had Kerala rice? We, we, uh, we had it. There's a place here called uh, Mayura or something like it. Okay. It's the only uh, Kerala restaurant. Brilliant. And there's like California. Really good, and everybody has gone there. Where, like, you see photos of India. So, if you're crazy food. Please, yeah, please, you guys have to yeah. try it too. So, okay. Chirubayar is nothing but like uh, green ground. Okay. Um, Mungdal, we call it. Mungdal, yeah. So, yes. But the way my mom makes it with like coconut and cumin seeds and everything, so it's like this thick, yeah, it's really, mm. yeah, it yeah, it sounds delicious. It is, yeah. Uh, favorite TV show? Hmm, that's a tough one. Uh, actually, 
this is not a favorite one, but this is a, an underrated one, Orphan Black. Oh, Orphan Black. Orphan Black is I'm an underrated watching. one. Tatiana Maslani is unbelievably, it's like criminally underrated as an actor. Uh, she has the best chemistry with herself because she plays up like nine different Yeah, that's a multi-character yeah. thing, yeah. So Orphan Black is... Yeah, Orphan Black. Right. I mean, it's not my favorite, but I felt called to say that can you all just find Orphan Black and watch Yeah, it? yeah absolutely. Yeah. And a uh, uh, favorite book or a book you're reading right now um, that you really enjoy? Does your ADD allow you to uh, read? I'm sorry? Does your ADHD allow you to read? No, it's like seven books in my bag for every mood. <laughs> but 100%. yeah, I can say it's uh, Alice Walker by the light of my father's smile. Okay. That's probably the first one that hooked me and, and then I had it in my bag for the next like 10 years or so. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you so much for sitting down with us. We've, uh, we've, it's been a pleasure talking to you. You're, you're, you're easy to talk to. Yeah. Um, and we've also been an admirer of your work for many years now. Uh, we've seen quite a quite a few of your films, and you're one of the most talented actresses, not only in India but in the in the world. We feel like you know, it, was, it was lovely watching the film. Uh, but I want to thank you so much for the talent. Yeah, yeah. 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 And we don't we say this to everyone we interview. We don't give accolades unless we really feel that way. No. But we we don't. That and so, and in addition to the fact of not just your talent as an actress, but the continued bravery that you show in empowering women and selecting roles and doing what you do because you're not just somebody who's an example of what it means to be elevated in the art form. Yeah. You are a really incredible example of what it means to maintain what's more important and most important and standing up for those things and letting your artistry speak even more loudly yeah. for the things that matter to you. So it, it's really wonderful to see you do the totality of what you do. Yeah as an artist who understands the influence that you can do to events change and so wish you yeah. great success with everything you do. I mean I mean it, thank you, because yeah. it doesn't get old just like have, getting to hear this means a lot because usually it's the other thing that's the loudest. Mm. Of course. It's like, oh we told you you should not have done this, you ruined your career and you could have done this, you could have done that. And as much as you want to ignore it, you kind of want somebody to remind you that oh you did you did good or you did the right thing. Sure, because the haters are you, always louder than yeah, you know. Yeah, yes. you've got to feed the other other voice as well. Exactly. Thank you yes. for saying that of means course. a lot to me. Of course, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Love to talk to you.